Hello everybody! What's up? What's going on today? We're gonna do a video about Found Beauty. Um, I think this is the brand at Walmart nobody's talking about. Um, I think people were talking about it when it was brand new and it was really like, ooh, what is this? I think that was around a year, maybe a little over a year ago. I know there were a few things I even featured, like in a Best in Beauty video. I remember loving that blush, but then like the BB cream and the concealer were kind of a flop for me. And basically the brand has just been kind of sitting there for me, you know, as far as when I walk through the store, I don't really stop and investigate too much until recently there was something that caught my eye and it was like a one minute flash cooling mask or something. I thought, ooh, that sounds kind of neat. And then randomly in a completely different area in the hair department, um, they had like a dry shampoo that was straight powder and that kind of thing tends to work really well in my hair because other kinds of dry shampoos most often except for like the Batiste um, will weigh my hair down quite a bit. So anyway I had good luck with those two really random things and I'm like maybe I should go back and check out some more stuff from this line. You know I feel like nobody's talking about it and I think part of the reason might be is the price point is um, a little bit higher for a lot of things. There's a lot around ten dollars or even a little over and it might be the kind of thing where you're waiting to see, is it really worth it? And as I've been testing what I have, which has been probably three weeks now that I've had this stash of stuff that I mostly bought online. A few of the things I got in my store, but like one night I was really hunkered down and I'm like, I'm gonna find the things I need to get here. So there are some things where I'm like, okay, for sure skippable, but some other really surprising great finds too. Do you like my mug? This account on Instagram like cracks me up on a regular basis. I had to get a mug and some magnets and a baby onesie. But the idea behind this brand is natural beauty. A lot of this stuff you can look at the back label and it'll say something like, for example, on this loose powder, 99% natural. It says inspired by tried and true ingredients from around the world, not tested on animals, good for your skin ingredients. So let's start already. We're going to do a full face here or a full face minus the brow and there was something else I didn't have. Maybe just the brow. First thing I'm gonna use is this cooling stick, cucumber cooling stick. Cools, calms, and depuffs the look of skin and it's 98% natural. This is kind of interesting because I've had quite a few things that are like this over time and a lot of them have a very cooling feel but also like a really wet feel when you touch them. And this almost has like a dryness, like it's really smooth but it feels more dry. But then it works into your skin and you're like, oh, okay. I'm feeling the moisture now. I'm feeling the cooling. But at first touch, you kind of wonder if it's going to have any hydration. But oh my gosh, I love this. I really have enjoyed this. And I've already got, you know, my skincare on for the day. If you watch my AM and PM skincare video, I went right up to my um, sunscreen and then basically I consider my skin prepped and ready to go. But putting this on top is kind of a nice, like, I don't know, additional light moisture layer. Feels good around the eye area. I want to hit that again. Oh, nice. That is highly enjoyable. It definitely delivers some moisture. Like to touch my skin, it feels even more hydrated than where I began. But the cooling effect is fantastic. I think this is going to go live in my little makeup fridge so I can get maximum coolness after that. I also picked up this 24 karat gold primer. This has been a product I've really been trying to figure out here with 24 karat gold and hyaluronic acid, 98% natural. The idea with this product is that it is meant to help lock in the moisture from your skincare. If you you look closely at it you can see like little gold flecks and stuff and it does not become this super smoothing pore filling added benefit kind of primer other than just feeling like you're putting on a light bit of moisturizer and it's supposedly locking in what's already there. To me I feel like I could take it or leave it honestly because I feel like my skin ends up being really well prepped moisture wise anyway before makeup with my skincare routine and there's a primer from CoverGirl that's called like moisturizing primer and I like how even though it's adding moisture to your skin as you blend it in you come away feeling like oh things are a little smoother and softer too and this you know you just it feels like an added skincare step to me not saying it's a bad thing and their foundation does wear really well on top of it on me so I guess I can't knock it too hard but I'm just not 100% sold on that now here is the foundation and this is kind of exciting
exciting. I actually have really enjoyed this. It's the Nourishing Liquid Foundation made with raspberry oil. Um, it does not have a percentage natural on this. I'm not sure what that is. I got it in the shade 130 light medium. Ends up being just a little darker than I expected it would be. I did buy this online. Part of why I did that was because shade selection was not like 100% all there in the store and some things were cracked open and messed with. But I'm going to pump out like a full pump, maybe just a little extra because I'm going to do beauty blender style with this today. And I'm going to try dotting it around with the beauty blender. This totally takes fingers out of the mix, huh? The hand absorbs just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just going to bounce this in and I dig this. This has better coverage than I would have expected. Like if I would have known that this was so dang good, I would have been clamoring to get it like when the brand was new, like right off the bat. But I, I don't know. I remembered trying their CC cream or their BB cream and thinking, eh, this is practically non-existent on the skin. Like it was a dead product for me. This, however, I think it's a very complete medium coverage. Like I wouldn't even call it light to medium. I think it's just very solid in that medium category. It does not look particularly matte on my skin, as I think you'll see by the time it's all said and done here. Like, can you tell there's a little glow to my skin? It says it's got raspberry oil in it, so it's an oil-infused foundation. More often than not, I've applied this with a brush, but the last few times I've been bringing in the Beauty Blender, and I gotta say, I just kind of like, I don't know, the glowiness. It seems even more radiant when I do it this way. But this has stayed well on me. I mean, I feel like it's kind of a middle ground foundation, sort of reminding me of the Physician's Formula, the Healthy Foundation. That's another one where I'm like, you know, it's not too dry matte cakey looking. It's not too super luminous. It's just kind of a straight up in the middle foundation giving you medium coverage and a nice evenness across the skin and it lasts well on me all day so it's like hard to have complaints about this guy. The only thing is I think the shade range runs a little dark because I wouldn't expect light to medium to be quite as dark as this was. Now I tried to stick concealer a long time ago when the brand was brand new to my Walmart store and it was very very dry. I'm pretty sure I decluttered it long ago but I did decide to go and try the color correct concealer in this peachy shade. Right off the bat, there was a lot of liquid coming out of this. You know, the separation problem that some products tend to have in little tubes. But I think we've worked through that fully, and now we're to straight up peachy creaminess. And it's sort of thin. You're going to see me putting on more concealer than you usually see me apply, but that's because this is sort of a different type of product. It's a very lightweight and I sometimes need to build it. Here's the odd thing. It works a lot better on my under eye darkness right in here. I think you'll notice a great brightening effect there, but not so much the melasma that's right out here on my cheeks. I feel like it does a little something, but ultimately like I can see right through it. So I've got that kind of started blending, but then right around here, it's going to blend all around that inner corner. And I feel like satisfyingly brightened there. Like it may not overall be the coverage that I might get from like an e.l.f. camo concealer in that zone or certain other products, but yet I do feel brightened up. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. Again, this is a very like lightweight kind of concealing product, very liquidy. And do a little more just like right in here and just let it go over the whole zone. <laughs> and you know, since this is the only concealer I have that I'm working with today, I'm even going to go around the sides of my nose and brighten up everywhere. It is the proper peachy tone, but just not enough coverage to really like tackle pinpointed dark spots, okay? So it doesn't get my full-on stamp of approval, but I definitely like it better than their stick concealer. Y'all, I'm shooting this on Wednesday morning, and it has been a week already, you know? I mean, I've had yesterday migraine headache, or the night before it was a migraine, and 
taking Baker to the vet, she didn't pee in outside the litter box, turns out she's got some arthritis, like lower back pain that might be keeping her from getting in there. I've been stressed about that, I feel like I'm really like feeling the pregnancy now at 34 weeks. I've been feeling it all along, but you know what I mean? It's kind of just weighing down on me, literally. Every little movement I need to make, I'm like fully aware of, like do I really need to pick that up off the floor? The coffee is appreciated today. I'm just glad to be here, glad to be feeling, you know, normal good. Even though it's early, I'm a little tired. But one thing I'm really excited to tell you is that drop-offs have been going amazingly well so far this school year for Bill. If you're not familiar, I wrote a whole blog post about like um, sort of the separation anxiety thing that we went through last year at this time. Uh, it wasn't right at the start of the school year, but it was a few weeks in and I think everything kind of sunk in, the newness of everything, the change of everything in her routine. And it became hard at drop-off for quite some time and and now it's just like, I don't know, she's really just in a groove. She's super happy. Just like everything's really clicking and just so much excitement, so much enthusiasm for it and I'm so happy. But moving along, we've got the Translucent Loose Setting Powder here. And this is one of those products labeled 99% Natural. And I've liked this. I've liked this a lot, guys. I even tried baking with it the other day. I'm like, how far can I take this stuff? Today I'm gonna use kind of my normal application, which would be my e.l.f. small tapered brush, and maybe a little more than I might normally use because I don't know. I'm trying to compensate a little bit for this concealer not being perfect or that corrector, but I would say this really does the job as well as my Maybelline Fit Me does, actually. Good about not looking overly dry, but definitely can have its impact on staying power around my T-zone for sure. So I'll just kind of dab that in all over because this is the only powder I'm working with. I know the brand does have, I'm pretty sure they have like a powder foundation, but I definitely feel like I can get away with this and only this powder wise and just be really happy with my finished look. And I saw in my fall video when I had brought up the blushes, somebody said, oh, that loose powder from Found is really good too. And I thought that's kind of a random thing. I never hear anybody talk about it, but yeah, I'm enjoying that. I feel like we just keep building and building on the look and I get more and more satisfied with each passing product with how things are going on my skin. The next thing is the bronzing powder and it's in the shade Golden Bronze. I think they just have this one shade and I gotta warn you it is pretty light like I think you're gonna see the effect on my skin but it's gonna be subtle so if you're a lighter skin tone than me you may really love this and if you're deeper than me you might think it's not worth your time I don't know why a brand only puts out one shade of a bronzer type product though but it's kind of swirled and it's the very same size and shape and whatnot as their blushes and I'm gonna apply this around my hairline I do feel like it's doing a little something but I'm really loading up my brush to get there but I like like how there's a hint of luminosity to it, right? You still kind of see a natural skin-like sheen through this. And now I'm gonna get some more and maybe go a little lower on the cheek here. See if you can see any effect. It's just so subtle. So definitely, yeah, like, okay, I've warmed myself up a tiny bit, but it's just a smidge because it's just so subtle. And now we're gonna do the blush. So I have two of these now. This was the one I remember Kristen was telling me about. It's called the Peach Glow, and then I have Rose Glow already, which my top broke, but I love that rosy flush, and I had that on in my fall recommendations video, and I've liked that blush for a while. I'm gonna put on the Peach Glow for you. Um, it's more subtle, but you can see it, you know? So I'm gonna take my e.l.f. blush brush here, pick up some of that product. It's again, like color swirled with glow. Um, I feel like in the bronzer, it was more like just two colors swirled. That lighter shade is not necessarily like highlight. It's just a lighter tone of bronze. But as I build this up just slightly, I think you can see the pretty peachiness. So pretty, and I love the level of glow in these. You know I'm a big fan of a glowy blush. I think the CoverGirl Instant Cheekbones are one of the best values you're gonna turn up, um, kind of in that respect from the drugstore. It's got that mix of like two tones of blush and a highlight in there. But here with this brand, I think you kind of are paying for more of the natural ingredients and whatever. And if that's a priority for you in your makeup, you know, it might be worth it. I think that's so pretty. I wanna add just a hint of this just to show you what kind of impact 
this color has. It's a little more berry, a little more rosy. Mm -hmm. Love it with my shirt color today. I'm just going to swirl that on kind of the outer part here. This is more like a little goes a long way for me. The peach one, I got to go back for seconds a little bit, but once I do, I'm going to be happy with that too. So there we go. I think they've got a great, beautiful blush formula happening there. I think they should put out even more shades. Finally, for highlight, um, this was a thing that I could not find in my Walmart store. They have like two tones of these radiant illuminating drops, and I really wanted the one that looked like this that looked almost a little pinky. Um, this is the one called Moonlit, and I knew I'd need to order that online to be able to get it. So there have been some liquid highlights at a drugstore price point that I have really liked over time here. I talk about the Revolution Champagne Liquid Highlighter a lot. Also, NYX has a really nice liquid highlight, too. This, I would say, is more subtle than those. I like to spread it out just a little bit on my hand and then grab a synthetic brush. Um, this is more just like pearlescent as opposed to having the potential to look metallic. And it's still really brightening. I think you're going to love the way this looks. Right here on top of the cheek. You know how I like to bring my highlight down on top of my the apple of my cheek. I feel like you get a real juiciness, just a real like, yes, great cheek look. So I kind of buff that in and it's a beautiful luminosity. Like this is where I step back and I look at this finished complexion look from Found and I'm like, yeah, I get it now, you know, I'm happy. Do you see what I'm saying though about how glowy and brightening that was? but not metallic. And I think a lot of people are gonna find that very, very wearable. And I'll take a little, you know, whatever's remaining here, I barely got any, but um, whatever's remaining on the brush, maybe I'll let that come up to the forehead a bit or wherever, but I mean, just, I think that's a stunning glow. That ain't nothing about pregnancy. Like, I, I put that on. I applied this product, it did not come from within. I put it on and wow love. Okay, so here we are. This is the face that I've got with the found stuff. We use the prep steps with that cooling stick that I liked, foundation, corrector, powder, bronzer, blush, and the illuminating drops. And even though a couple of those steps that there were a little questionable for me, I'm like, do I really need to be using this primer? Is this corrector really doing the job? I'm not so sure about the bronzer. Do you see what I mean when I say everything kind of layers up to actually look really great? Yeah, that's my takeaway. I'm loving that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill in my brows real quick because you've seen me do that a ton and I don't have a brow product from this line. So I'll do that and put on some eyeshadow primer and then I've got a palette to show you. Brows are done, eye primer is on, and I've got an eyeshadow palette here to talk about. It's totally reminding me of those Sonia Kashuk palettes. Do you remember those that had like this amount of shades, this exact size at Target? It was years ago, but I remember talking about them a lot on my channel. So this is the set called Nude. I think there's another color option as well. But these shadows are actually pretty darn good. Um, what we're looking at in here, though, is a lot of satin finish. We have a matte up here with this cream shade. Matte's down here with the dark brown and black. But pretty much everything in the middle is hanging with this soft shimmer. Some of them, you know, a few of them with a little more sheen than others, I would say. But still nothing seeming like really loud, flashy metallic. Um, it's a very natural palette, what can I say? I'm trying to think how I can possibly like make my look different today than what I've maybe done in the past with this. I could go darker on the lid. I think I may do that, um, but I'm gonna start out with something in the crease. Typically I go for this shade or this shade in the crease, but I think I'm gonna go down here. Um, this is kind of like a, satin finish taupe right here. But I was pleasantly surprised by this eyeshadow palette, actually. Plenty of workable looks, a lot of very sensible <laughs> everyday work looks I see coming from this palette. I don't feel like it takes a long time to build up the color. And again, the textures being not all fully mattes, you know, some people might find that to be a little bit more, a little more forgiving a little more ease maybe in the application and blending. It depends with mattes, you know, some mattes from some brands are dry and just kind of hard to work with, kind of pull and tug, just a little more resistant, and then some just blend like butter. Now I'm just gonna take a bare brush 
and blend the outside of that a little bit. I don't think there was much of a harsh edge, but whatever's there, I'm going over. And then I'll take, I think I'll take this slight golden shimmer here. It's kind of a buttery shimmer. And let that come up under the brow. And then a shade I haven't really worked with is this kind of cool satin finish gray right here. So let's take that kind of all over the lid see what happens. Again, I don't think I've met a shade in this palette that was really like unpigmented or difficult, so. The sheen that this shade ultimately has makes it even come across on the lid just a little lighter than it looks in the pan, you know? Now, Bub and I have been watching One Tree Hill. <laughs> a lot of people were like, when we were watching Dawson's Creek probably a year or so ago, maybe not quite a full year ago, but we were watching Dawson's Creek. We went through the entire thing and I loved it. Bub enjoyed it too, but many people were coming out of the woodwork saying, you need to also watch One Tree Hill. And I think we're still in the first season. The seasons have a lot of episodes. It's on Hulu. But it's something that like, I don't know, the 90s kids, the early 2000s kids are gonna look at and be, feel very like, oh, you know, there's so many things about the way people dress and songs and certain things that come up that take you right back to your earlier years. And I was telling Bub, like, I'm surprised by how much I'm enjoying One Tree Hill. Like, it's really good. I think the actors are really good and, some good storylines and stuff. And he's like, you know, I think it might be even a little better than Dawson's Creek. And I was like, oh, what? I would love to know in the comments section if you've watched both, which one do you actually think is better? I like them both, but I don't know if I could pick one over the other. Like at this point, I know so much about Dawson's Creek. I've watched so much more of that show. I don't think it's even fair for me to pick. Once I've finished One Tree Hill, then I think I'll be prepared to say, you know, um, let's take a little bit of this black. Uh, I used some of this yesterday. Like, the black isn't playing around either. But James Vanderbeek is on Dancing with the Stars. And I am, like, rooting for him so hard. I, and he was amazing that first week. Like, I wasn't watching it on the night it aired because I was having my fun little migraine headache experience. And yes, some people have asked me because I was talking on Instagram about the headache. And some people are asking about my blood pressure. Are you having pregnancy concerns like preeclampsia or whatever? And no, I mean, my blood pressure's fine. And I'm not having any swelling or any of the other symptoms. I think migraines are kind of a thing in themselves that you'll get when sort of the factors align. Um, for me, spending too much time looking at a computer, stress, I was stressed about Baker, I hadn't eaten in hours or drank anything, which was terrible. It was like I was rushing off to take her to the vet as soon as Bub got home from work and I hadn't had dinner and hours were passing here. I ended up getting just super hungry, but I hadn't eaten in a while. But you know how it is when you get stressed about something, you can almost forget to eat. Like there aren't a lot of situations in my life life where I'm going to flat out forget to eat, but if I'm worried about my cat, I will. So, anywho. I have been prone all my life, even since I was a little kid, to occasionally getting a migraine headache with aura, as they say. So, like, with the the visual disturbance, like, you'll feel like, I don't know, you're if you're reading captions on a screen, the center of it will feel like it's dropped out or, like, you can't really focus in on it. Um, also, finding the words. You're just talking, having a normal conversation, and suddenly you're not, like, able to think how you usually would. It's a very scary thing if you've never had one, but if you do have migraines, you know immediately that one's coming on. You better get to a dark room and lay down. But I hadn't had one for what seems like quite a long time. So I kind of, anytime I get one, I take it as my sign. Like, you need to slow down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you need to maybe lessen what's on your plate just a bit so you're not overly stressed. And just taking care of yourself from the little things perspective. Like, don't forget to eat. Don't forget to drink water. What have I even been doing with this look? Like, I've just been talking kind of on autopilot, but I was using the black, getting that all blended up into the crease. I wanted to go for a bit darker look than I'd use with this palette because it's very tempting for me to want to take this pinky tone shade or this kind of champagne-y color right there and pop those on the lid. And I might do them around the inner corner. That's my instinct with this palette but I like those light shimmery shades. That's kind of the thing. They look really pretty all over the lid. And I think I'll take a pencil brush and we'll go to this shade down here. It's kind of a charcoal color. But before I got into the headache chat, 
It's talking about James Vanderbeek on Dancing with the Stars, and he was awesome, I thought. And he's got all these kids, like all these kind of identical looking, blonde as can be kids. So cute. If you don't follow him on Instagram, you should. He's kind of like fascinating. But I'm rooting for him. I'm really rooting for Karamo too. Um, gosh, there are several that I really like. But the girl from um, Fifth Harmony, I think her name's, is it Allie Brooke? She was robbed, okay? She should have probably scored higher than both Lauren Elena and Hannah the Bachelorette. Like, I considered all three of those kind of on the same level, but I thought Allie Brooke went even harder and faster and just like sharper and everything. And how did she fall lower than them? I don't know, you guys. I'm not a professional dancer. I'm not a judge. But you know people thought James Vanderbeek was slaying it because the producers placed him at the end of the show. So they try to end on a high note always, don't they? So I've got my Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight there for brightness. I feel like I need just something to help me out here. I don't feel like the blending was perfectly done by me there. Maybe the dark brown with a smallish brush, like the Morphe M506. It's a good little outer corner. Thing. And just let some of that dark brown kind of help everything merge into one. That's a little better. Well, I think the black is easy to work with in this palette. You gotta watch yourself with pretty much any black and be like, okay, did I did I blend that enough? But you could go super natural with this. Like I'm talking just stick to like this color in your crease and like that on your lid and call it a day and be really satisfied with your natural self. But you can go smoky too. We have a mascara as well. This is the Found Volumizing Mascara and it's yet a Another brush that's going to kind of remind you of that hourglass shape of maybe a Lash Paradise or a Too Faced Better Than Sex. It comes out a bit more tapered toward the tip, which I don't mind, um, but I'm going to need to curl my lashes first. If I were designing the mascara brush, I'd make it a little smaller just because I feel like then it's just easier to get where you need to get those inner corners. These big bunglesome brushes are just kind of, I think, to sell the product and make a person think big brush, big lashes, but that's not always the way it turns out, right? For me, this mascara has been pretty darn average. It can build up a little length, but I feel like if you just pass the fine line of like messing with it too much or trying to build it up too much, it gets some funky ends where it's suddenly not building on itself so well. It's not as dramatic as CoverGirl Supersizer, or definitely not as dramatic as It Cosmetics Superhero, just throwing that out there. Like, can you see, it's lengthening me out some. I know I got a little dab of that on my lid, but I also think it's dropping my curl quickly. Can you see what we're working with here, guys? Some increased length. Just not super crazy dramatic, you know? These glowy cheeks are like, you're never gonna outshine me today, mascara. A couple of different lip products here. One is the, um, what is it called? Satin Cream Lipstick. I have it in the shade Ginger. First off, coming in smelling like a crayon. Definitely, for sure. And there is a lot of dryness in this stick. That's the color swiped on with quite a bit of pressure. Um, if I put it on my lips, like, it's just uncomfortable to drag across my lips. I will not do it. If you put on a lot of lip balm underneath this, you might have some glide, but there is no glide from this product alone. So probably the biggest dud out of everything I've tried. Now I also got the Ultra Shine Lip Gloss, and I have this in the shade Blossom. So fortunately, this gloss is, it's fine, you know? It feels fine, comfortable on the lips, almost a little bit like uh, lip balmy as it sits on your lips. Can you see the sheer pink? I kind of like the sheer pink. It's sheer, but it's not real streaky. I wouldn't have minded a little more color, but it's not, it's not a problem. And like I said, it feels nice. It doesn't smell weird. It's got like, I don't know, maybe a, a slight hint, just a hint 
hint of mint in there, but you gotta really be looking for it. Finished look and overall takeaway from this brand, I mean, way more hits than misses, in my opinion. And the skin is by far stealing the show. Not that the eye isn't fine, and you have a lot of options with this eye palette, frankly. Um, they included some very dark shades here that could become eyeliner for you, that can give you this deepened up look, as opposed to the really soft natural look from the upper part of the palette. So that's good versatility there. But my favorite parts are probably the cucumber cooling stick. That feels great. That's going straight into my little makeup fridge. Um, I like the nourishing liquid foundation, actually. I think it's a great kind of middle of the road foundation. Medium coverage, a strong medium coverage. Lasts really well on my skin. I think is a key player in helping preserve this kind of a look on my skin all day. If the foundation wasn't wearing well, we'd have breakdown in so many other areas. I like the loose setting powder. I really like the blushes. Actually, both the peach and the rose. The illuminating drops absolutely killed it. I love that pearly luminosity, and it's interesting how they were able to keep it from going too metallic looking. Enjoyed this nude eye palette as well, and the lip gloss was decent. Now, the things that did not impress me so much, I thought the 24 karat gold primer while yes, it probably is adding some moisture, maybe is helping to preserve some moisture in my skin all day, I just kind of didn't feel like it was a real essential step. I was not that impressed by the coverage of the color corrector. The bronzer was borderline too light on me. The mascara, not the greatest at holding curl, not the greatest for dramatic, really full lash looks. Biggest dud was the satin cream lipstick, dry as a bone. But even outside this stuff, like I was saying earlier, those one minute sheet masks were really good. Um, the hair, the dry shampoo stuff was nice. So you might even consider looking outside the makeup if you want to branch out a bit and experiment with this brand because they really are doing a lot. And as I've given the brand more of a chance, I definitely do see more hits than misses. So that's encouraging. But thank you guys for sitting here with me today. Was this kind of like a makeup therapy session? I feel like we talked about some things. We talked about migraines. We talked about our 90s TV programs. But I just want you to know I love you. I appreciate appreciate you. Um, any positive vibes you're sending my way for this pregnancy, your prayers, your thoughts, I appreciate them so much. And I'm sending that love back to you for whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through in life. Just remember, be sensitive, be good to people, because you never really truly know what's happening under the surface. So be kind. Thank you so much, and I will see you again very soon. Bye, guys.